Hi, I'm Jennifer Moss, CBC Wellbeing columnist, writer for Harvard Business Review, author of Unlocking Happiness at Work, and I'm currently writing a new book, Rethinking Burnout, that will be due at the end of this year. Thank you for joining me. Researchers continue to find that when we go through stressful events, that the majority of us will bounce back to normal happiness levels. In positive psychology research, resiliency is really centered around the concept of rebounding. So we face a stressful event, our happiness levels dip, sometimes they actually stay there for a while, but most of us will go back to this sort of happiness set point. It may be hard to imagine right now, actually, but times of extreme stress can be opportunities for growth as long as we know how to use that stress and that adversity effectively. We actually call that something. We call it post-traumatic growth. You may recognize most of the people in these photos, but what you may not know is that every single one of these people have gone through adversity and come out of that with post-traumatic growth. Post-traumatic growth, or PTG as it's sometimes referenced, can be defined as positive personal changes that result from the survivor's struggle to deal with trauma and its psychological consequences. The process of post-traumatic growth can lead to improved relationships with others, more compassion, openness, appreciation for life, spiritual growth, personal strength, and a renewed sense of possibilities in the world. PTG is not merely a bouncing back to the same way we would have existed before we faced the adversity, but rather it gives us a sense of positive growth that goes beyond anything we'd experienced before. Think about all the people right now on Zoom who feel very little mastery of what they're doing. They don't feel very effective. They've worked from home never, and now all of a sudden they're trying to develop those skills. It's all about figuring it out. But if we don't have resiliency and we have a fixed mindset, not a growth mindset where we're open to learning new things or trying new things, then that's going to be a problem. There is a great story that went viral about this manager who was just using video conferencing for the first time and had to leave this meeting and accidentally she switched on filters that she couldn't turn off. So she just led the entire meeting with her team as a potato. Hilarious, right? These are just, uh, you know, one of a million examples of all of us right now trying to be effective in a time where we don't really feel like we know what we're doing. There are so many companies that actually would have never thought that they could work from home or have staff that work from home. But what they're realizing now is that it's possible. So without this sort of forced experiment uh, in the workplace, a lot of employers and employees would have never known that this is something that they could do effectively. Okay, so let's just take a second to watch this quick video and then I'll talk about why I showed it to you after. How many of you were cringing watching that child keep falling off of that chair? The thing is, though, if we don't allow people in our lives to take risks, if we don't allow ourselves to take risks, then what we're doing is we're stealing future joy from another person or from ourselves. Trying and failing and falling and getting back up and then finally succeeding is the most wonderful feeling in the world. We're going to pause right now and work on our resiliency skills. We're going to take the next five to seven minutes and write down examples, as many as we can, of things that we may not have been doing that well at the beginning of the pandemic, but now seem to be managing okay. Maybe we're even excelling at it. So let's take just a couple minutes and spend time building up our resiliency skills. So why did we practice this particular activity? Well, when we reflect, and particularly when we reflect in writing, it helps to secure a memory. And right now, through adversity, we want to be able to remember those moments that we overcame stress, that we were able to handle it in the moment. 
And then when we're faced with future stress, we can lean on these memories to help us feel more assured, more certain that we'll be able to overcome that same adversity in the future. So now we're going to work on another skill. That skill is hope. Most people tend to think that hope is like a wish. You know, I wish that I got that new promotion or I wish I could get that new car. I wish I could get those new pair of shoes. And yet hope is actually not a wish. According to positive psychology research, based on a theory by Dr. Snyder, is that hope is actually a psychological skill that we can develop through practice. And it's all about agency and pathways. So essentially, hope is about getting to your goals. Hope theory can be broken out into four subcategories, goals, pathways, agency, and barriers. Let's take a goal, for example, that we may want to achieve, say getting a promotion. Well, that's our endpoint for hopeful thinking. And then we would use pathways, which are essentially plans. So instead of just creating a plan A to get to that promotion, you would create a plan B, a plan C, and That then makes us feel motivated and we believe that we control over our outcomes because what happens is when we hit barriers, which are those blocks or those challenges to our goals, then we can lean back on those plans. We know that maybe plan A didn't work, but at least we have plan C to plan Z to fall back on. And that's how we can actually use hope theory to be able to get promoted or reach our goal. So having all of these skills together actually gives us a really strong capacity to achieve goals, especially during times of extreme stress. Building hope is actually easier than you think. Let's listen to Admiral McRaven describe a really easy trick for us to build our cognitive Want to change the world? Start off by making your bed. If you make your bed every morning, you will have accomplished the first task of the day. It will give you a small sense of pride And it will encourage you to do another task, and another, and another. And by the end of the day, that one task completed will have turned into many tasks completed. Making your bed will also reinforce the fact that the little things in life matter. If you can't do the little things right, you'll never be able to do the big things right. And if by chance you have a miserable day, you will come home to a bed that is made. (laughs) That you made. And a made bed gives you encouragement that tomorrow will be better. We're going to pause now and work on our hope skills. Basically, I'm going to have you take a goal. It could be a small goal that you want to have accomplished in a week, or maybe it's a bigger goal that you're looking to achieve within the next year. Either way, I want you to apply the hope theory process to it. So you're going to name your goal. You're going to write down two different plans to achieve it. You're going to think about all the tools and resources you need to get to your goal and also what are the ways that you're going to feel motivated. And then you're going to think of some barriers that might hold you back from achieving your goal. When all of that's done, we're going to take the next five minutes to work on that skill. We'll regroup after that. So again, why this particular activity? Well, Just by writing down our goals, we're 50% more likely to achieve it. So before we even apply the hope theory process, we're one step ahead. So whether it's a small goal, we call it a wow goal within one week, or something that we are looking to achieve over the next two to five years, if we apply a hope theory process to it, we are way more likely to achieve it than if we didn't. Today, it's important to note that I've only really touched on two of these skills that are part of a larger framework. These seven skills, hope, efficacy, resilience, optimism, gratitude, empathy, and mindfulness are part of a hero framework. This cluster of traits that actually help us to develop psychological fitness so that we can experience post-traumatic growth in times of extreme stress. What is so interesting about this cluster of traits is that when they're combined, they can give us the rocket fuel that we need to be optimal in a situation that is not optimal. So thank you for spending just a few minutes with me today to learn about how we might be able to flourish in a time of real stress. In the meantime, stay safe, stay well, stay positive if you can. I really do believe that we are all in this together. Thank you.